this should be a chore to like, oh, I gotta go check the box. Oh, I gotta go to church. Go. Like, no, no, like, I like want to do that because feeling the presence of God is just such, it's, it's so attractive. And that's like, that's what's changed my heart and renewed my mind. And I don't want to do anything but that now, you know? So. I came to Shine and Kevin's um, with my friend Brian. I had recently been going through a lot, struggling with addiction, panic attacks, debilitating anxiety, depression. The day before that, I actually was suicidal. And I went and I was delivered from my addiction. And I was delivered from my panic, anxiety. How many years have it been since you felt the Lord? Seven, maybe eight. I mean, since I was at least 13 or 14 years old, I'm 22 and a half now, so it's been, it's been a long time. Like my mind was like a prison. I was susceptible to all the attacks of the enemy because I was completely disconnected from, from God and Jesus. Now that I, I've turned to him, I, I can't even tell you the turnaround. It's not anything that I can explain. So when I've woken up the past week, I've the first thing that's on my mind is to pray. And I actually feel happy when I wake up. I haven't felt happy when I've woken up in a long time and I've used things to try and make myself happy, unhealthy ways. And, I, and, 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 and lately I've realized that when the enemy comes in to try to attack, the first thing I think is to get on my knees and pray. And then when I've wronged my mother over the past like week, immediately God's come in and said, you go apologize to your mother, you give her a hug. I don't think that, I'd never thought that way. Like. I was so controlled by the enemy that that just wasn't the way that I thought or I behaved for years. So when I say it's so weird, is because it's so different from like what I'm used to, you know? He said he likes waking up and not feeling like such a jerk. <laughs> Seriously, I was working out today. This, this overwhelming feeling of joy came when I thought about going to Shine and Kevin's. I was like, I cannot wait to get there. and. Just because I want to do everything I can to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit because it has just completely changed my life in the last week. And I want to continue to do that. How are you feeling tonight in the corner you said? Great. I was crying over there. I was, I was literally like, I had chills all down my body in this fire inside me and down my back. And I know that's the feeling of the Holy Spirit when it comes over me. And, and when we started talking about deliverance, passivity and accusation, I had the, the same feeling that came over me on Friday, last Friday, when I got delivered from addiction. It was like this, it's like this numbing feeling, this good, calm, numbing feeling over my body. And I felt looking like, like I thought in my head, like here and there, there was a little bit of judgment here and there that was still like going, but like I looked around the room and I searched and I couldn't find that feeling. So like, I don't know, I just, I just, I think since last Friday when I opened my heart to it and, and turned it over, it's just... I don't know, it's a complete 180. So. Yeah. I, did I, did not, not, I did not not feel the Holy yes. Spirit. From the moment that I walked in, it was, it was like tickling me on the back of the neck. And then it was just like full blown, full body from when I grabbed Cheyenne's hand. And especially during the worship. I mean, but definitely when you're, I mean, yeah, it was all night. It was all night. We love you, Joe. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing Joe. Thank you, God. So ashamed of how my arms look. I just never felt like I could be forgiven for that, for what I did, because it just felt like I got to the lowest point in my life. I just felt like I was not going to be able to me forgive myself. The Bible says we can confess our sins to one another. You confess your sins to God so that you can be He's faithful to forgive. I've been going to church for a long time.
depression, off medication. He is being delivered PTSD. He has been delivered of drug use. He has been delivered of witchcraft. He has been delivered of sexual addiction. We got it in treatment. But I'm not against treatment, but I'm saying none of them got delivered in treatment. They got delivered by Jesus and we're meeting him tonight. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for Christ. I thank you, Lord, for your Son, called by your name. I thank you that he has chosen and he has accepted, whether he knows it or believes it or not. And I thank you, God, in Jesus' name, that you came to set the captive free. And so we just declare every drug addiction, John, I don't even know where you go with that. In the word, in the mighty name of Jesus, over Joe, and I pray right now against every spirit of addiction. We command you out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of alcoholism, we say out. Every spirit of drug addiction, we command out right now. Every lying spirit of depression, we command out right now. Jesus. Spirit of suicide out right now. Jesus. So, have you been more than you got that? Is that what you
from a guy at one point was an atheist. Jeez. No faith. Complete, like, nothing. No connection. Spiritually dead inside. There's thoughts that would go through my head that every every day of perversion and just, it's just, it was just miserable and just, that was constantly on my neck and I thought that that was just who I was. I thought I was just screwed up. It's an ugly sight what I was, what I was dealing with. I was in passenger seat. I was just letting the enemy just drive and I just, I was out of control and I didn't put, you know, my faith in God and I didn't open up or surrender. <laughs> so I didn't go to church for like six years, and like if you talk about the Bible or God or Jesus, that pretty much just immediately made me dislike you. I came here today, and there was no anxiety or fear inside of me, and no problem with hearing the Word of God. And I've sat in church for years, and I've had panic attacks, miserable, and just, and just finally I just, I don't know, I just, something's different. I probably have the worst potty mouth ever, like a sailor, like... For the longest time and like i catch myself like before i'd swear today like it would come up and i'd be like oh and like stop it like you know because i, I want to talk i don't want to speak like that anymore because it's dirty and you know, i've been down a dark road so if i can come back from it you know who can oh yeah i, I went Money. home at like one in the morning and i walked my parents down so i said they got to hear the good news when i got home <laughs> They've been, they've been, they've wanted this for me for so long. I don't know, I haven't hugged my mom like that in a long time. I just haven't been able to love them, you know? Well, the Bible says, my sheep know my voice and none other will they follow. And by saying none other will they follow, they won't follow the other ones, meaning there are other ones. Mm. There are voices all around us in the spirit realm. Mm. So it suggests all types of things, and that one just had a, like a permanent spot. Um. Yeah. You know, how many go have gotten rid of the voices? Mm. Amen. They'll come yes. back around and try to test the ground, right? And mm -hmm. then you just say, oh, you're a demon. And you left. Stay yep. gone. It happened right now when I was in there. And I immediately was like, you have no place here. Woo! Not anymore. Oh. I'm not going to let you let me suffer anymore. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're not going to be a I said that last that night. When I got down and prayed, I said, I am refusing to let you put me through this pain anymore. Woo! I'm not going to allow you to do it. I'm not. I'm. Every time you come, if you do, I know where to go. Woo! Woo! And that's believing in the reality of Jesus yeah. and the reality of even evil. Mm -hmm. yes. Otherwise, it's like, um, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. But he's seeing the dark side of evil, yes. the darkness of evil, the depths of evil. Mm -hmm. And so you have to, once you see the light and you're in the light, Stay in the light, mm -hmm. right? That's what he has a grasp on. Mm -hmm. it's not, there's no flirting with mm -hmm. oh, this or that. That's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. That's right. And the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye 
Joe. 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 So the only way to maintain this deliverance is live in that word filled by his spirit. And that word is your new manual. Yes. Everything it says you do. Everything it says don't do, you don't do. Yes. By the power of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Your righteousness won't get you to God. He came and got you and gives you his righteousness through his son. So it's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> he gives you desires to taste them. The Bible says, where is that? The Bible says, God is working in you, giving you both the desire and the power. Philippians 2.13. Okay. 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 And that one was what? Philippians 2.13. And Philippians 2.13. He's just been given to start meditating on.